everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, <laughs> take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vince Stone. That is Joe Bright. And you are at home watching us live on Twitch, listening to us after the fact. It's kind of brilliant. We're here. But it's another great day for Linux, everyone. It's been a while since I said that. I thought I'd remind you. But yeah. you already knew. <laughs> What's new? You're back from your, um, do you, do you call your Disney... It's kind of a staycation because Disney World's like next it door, is. right? You know, I got to yeah. walk over there. Yeah, the, the Disney, Dis Disney thing. Uh, absolutely, and that's what it's about. I'm doing Disneyland every month, but that's our, me and my husband's form of staycation at the Disneyland Resort um, here in SoCal. And we had a, a great trip on on Sunday. We had fun in uh, Galaxy's Edge, the the Star Wars land, and. Uh, that was nice. We ate there at a, at a really good restaurant. And uh, did you have ice cream? Actually, no, no. But I had Rice Krispie treats covered <laughs> with with white chocolate. <laughs> all right, all right. And those were fun. But uh, what was awesome is my Steve husband got on a ride with me that I never thought he would. It was the Wave Swinger. It's 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 a swing that that. Swing, swings you in circles really, really fast. And Disney, the one at Disneyland is one of the fastest around and one of the smoothest and one of the nicest. And uh, he got on that. And I think he was only able to do it because it had a very short cycle. So it was under two minutes. <laughs> so he was pretty dizzy after, but he did it. I was amazed. All right. <laughs> I was so proud of him. <laughs> Good on you, Steve. Good yeah. on you. It's nice to be getting out there and uh, trying adventurous new things like it theme park rights yes of exactly <laughs> couple of things i've been playing with um if you keep track i posted on discord and i posted on um twitter day before yesterday and i talked about it on saturday i was like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and buy this uh i've been playing that little experiment just out of curiosity i picked up the mm -hmm. amd 5600g for jackbox because those things are stupid cheap they're just like laughably cheap these days and it turned out MSI had a um, beta BIOS that I could put in, which would allow me to run that on my like four or five year old B350 motherboard. I've been playing around with that, used it for a little while, but it just really knackered up the BIOS and I like playing with it. Found a B550 used from Amazon Warehouse and I rolled the dice on it. I did. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, you know what? $85? Why not? Pretty Free good. shipping? Yeah, why? <laughs> It was definitely the used version because normally when you get stuff from Amazon Warehouse, it will have the box or packaging. This was a box with a static bag in it that had a motherboard in it. That's all <laughs> yeah. we got. That's everything. That was in and out. I was like, all right, fine. Always a little bit just, oh, what's wrong with it? Pulled it out. I only found a small amount of mystery goo around uh, one of the screw posts. I'm like, what is that? We're going to swab that off. Maybe check it for DNA. And it had clearly been used. I found a little bit of thermal lube on the ZIF socket. Like, oh. All right. Okay. Somebody used it. Didn't notice anything visually broken on it. I want to get onto MSI. This is the B550A Pro. I think like down at the bottom near the um, PCIe uh, second by 16 slot, like on a ground plane, there's this one lone resistor surface mount that is covered up that looks like something you would want to scratch off of a used motherboard. Like, oh, what is that? Get that off. And I scratched on it two or three times. I'm like, wait a minute. And I put a magnifying glass. I'm like, oh man, I almost scratched off a surface mount. It's mm. all by itself. It was kind of weird, but <laughs> there it is. That is my um, motherboard. Look at that. Look at all the awesome. fancy stuff in our audio Beautiful. box. Not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no one has commented on my cable management, have they? Nope. <laughs> Just a comment from Modern Hobo. That, it's not that, that bad. <laughs> you you routed them behind, so. <laughs> like, wh what are you supposed to do with them? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> plug them in. Like, there's no big deal there. That is the entirety <laughs> of uh, the box that runs our audio chain. It has a fiber optic card and an audio interface, and that's it. Oh, there's an SSD in there, but and an NVMe. <laughs> there's an NVMe under the NVMe cover. That's it. That's the thing. Also, thanks everybody who showed up for Trackmania yesterday. That was yeah. interesting. 
That was uh, fun. Those were, were hard maps yesterday, but I'm looking forward to practicing. <laughs> I, I'm going to look forward to all the excuses laying out Friday, but I know myself, <laughs> Ogie, and Beastvik, not going to be one of them because I got irritated about an hour and a half later. I'm like, you know what? There was this one map. I'm like, I know I can get around that. I log back into the server, Ogie and Beastwick, we're on that one map, like cycling. I'm like, yep, here we yeah. go. Let's do it. Let's sit down yeah. and figure it out. I got around it. And we did it. There's some big challenges. There's one map I might pull out just because it's a little more RNG than I like. But you're welcome to come hang out. We got a private server. It's open 24-7. And Friday, we do points matches where we give out free games for the top three spots. So, mm -hmm. And it's a good excuse. It's Linux and Laps with Frenemies. It is brilliant. We have audio live in the voice channel. And to answer Game of Tron's question, I bought the blue thing. <laughs> Not the blue thing. There's another blue thing I got to get for the audio thing. It's like this Midas 500 series thing. There was this vintage blue thing that showed up. Weird, old audio hardware that's blue finds me, Jill Bryan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look for it. It finds me. Comes yeah. out of nowhere. And it's always reasonably priced. And it's always of questionable use. It'll be here tomorrow. And they're bright blue, not just like a, a subtle this one, blue. But... This one's baby blue. Yeah, see that? That's... <laughs> but. Wow. <laughs> it, you know what? I, you're, I think you'll find the aesthetics of it very pleasing. Because it, it is the most vintage-y looking vintage thing because it's 45 years old. Yeah, that's amazing. It is old, classic radio mm -hmm. hardware that we're going to plug in. Just play. I might do a video on it. Again, it was like super cheap. I'm like, I don't need that. Fine, we're just going to get it. Because you make those deals. Maybe you do it. I know I do. But like on things you just don't need, you'll sit there and you're like, you know what? If that's still there two weeks from now, you go back and check. I'll get it. But it, it was still there. I got to make some custom cables for it. We'll find out. So mm -hmm. this is, we're not sponsored by Canonical this week, but we got two Canonical stories. But one <laughs> yes. of the Canonical stories falls into the Microsoft loves Linux segment. Uh, yeah, so it does. <laughs> you decide. Um, something we're all excited about, myself included. Jill's going to tell us about the Star 5 Vision 5 risk five that's a lot of fives yes <laughs> so yeah canonical is actually very proud to announce the ubuntu release for another piece of risk five hardware and yes it's the star fives star five vision five board and the star five is the first actually generation of a cost-effective risk five single board computer and is designed to run Linux with Star 5's JH7100 Vision Processing SoC. And this SoC is equipped with a 64-bit high-performance RISC-V dual-core processor with a 2 megabyte of L2 cache and running at 1 gigahertz. And it has 8 gig gigabytes of RAM, a 40-pin GPIO header, and end-to-end -end hardware and software infrastructure. And uh, what's interesting there is uh, Venn has just found one on Kickstarter that's even cheaper, that's even higher end. <laughs> Can you tell us about that, Venn? <laughs> nope, that's my secret, man. I'm not gonna tell anybody ah! about that, that's crazy. <laughs> so, you know, you got a couple of options with your Vision 5s uh, traditionally out of the box. They're like, hey, go download this Fedora image, which makes sense, Fedora's. Yeah. Know, big enough bad enough but yeah i was looking around with this and currently right now if you get the one that you know good on canonical you went out and you're like hey this is an official image you can download it and it's good because we need stuff like that for risk 5 development mm -hmm. but if you want the board that you can buy right now it's 179 dollars for an 8 gig pi like device but it's risk 5 it's not arm in this brave new world uh that's not a bad deal because you could actually buy one Unlike a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig, which maybe <laughs> if you get lucky, you get on the right waiting list, you just show up at Adafruit on the right day, you can snag yeah. one for 200 bucks or whatever they, or you can just get blatantly scalped on Amazon right now. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a Vision 5 2 in the works. So that's what Jill was alluding to. Yeah. I found the Kickstarter for that. 28 <laughs> days to go. It's already got 42 grand out of the 28 gold. They're just doing market research for these Kickstarters. These things are already, you know, put together, ready to go. And I like this because um, this is a quad core. Nice. Not only is it a quad core, it's a whole lot cheaper. Yeah. $93. And you know what? I might be tempted to just pick one up to play around with. What do we have? A uh, basic one? And that, that's for the one I want. If you can get a regular 2 gig version for um, 46 bucks and 4 gig for... Do, 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 what is that? There's money. Oh. $68 more for $68. Uh, nice. Maybe, yeah. maybe. And of course I was like, well, why would you install Ubuntu on this when you could install Debian? I went and looked at the Debian installed instructions for that and I noped right off that page. I'm like, uh -uh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that, that wasn't a Linux in installation. That was an experiment. Yeah, I, still it's in, one of those, in like, alpha. I could, <laughs> I could technically get it up and running, but I don't hate myself. I would probably just put Ubuntu on it. Probably I'd just run Fedora on it, but hey, each to their own. I don't have any Risk Five hardware to play around with. It's just yeah, not been, same same here. I haven't seen anything that I thought I could make use of. If that comes across correctly, like, yeah. I don't. I don't buy stuff just to like. Oh, that's fun. I play with it and I put it up. Uh, but in, like something that I could turn into like one of these co-host boxes or, you know, uh, something mm -hmm. to run the stream deck or like that. I might pick one of these up. I might just go ahead and break one of my rules of not ordering um, pre-release hardware only because they've proven that they can ship these. Yeah. And I can't really get anything else right now. Oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. So, yeah. Um, um, It'll be really nice when uh, there's a version of Ubuntu available for the uh, the new Star Five board, and I'm I'm sure this what uh, this it, Ubuntu image may have compatibility with that new one coming out, or they right. just have to make some adjustments. But canonical porting Ubuntu to RIS Five, you know, is um, to become actually it's it's going to become the reference OS for early adopters, and I think this is a really good choice, and especially because there is a long-term collaboration now between Star 5 and Canonical. This was actually really huge news. And in fact, Cindy Goldberg, the vice president of Silicon Alliance at Canonical, stated, Canonical and Star 5 are partnering, partnering to create an enterprise-grade Ubuntu image for the new Vision 5 board bringing open source software and open source hardware together for developers to build a broad range of computer vision applications at the edge. I can't wait to see what developers are going to build with this Vision 5 board and Ubuntu. So yeah, this is really big, big news. And you can actually right now download the latest Ubuntu Server 22.04.1 LTS image for the Star 5 Vision 5 board. And it's in our show notes. The link is in the show notes. It might be fun. If it's anything like Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi, I will do a hard pass because that is a dumpy, sluggish distribution. <laughs> I think this one is going to be quite a bit faster because it's on faster hardware. I don't because, well, I mean, it's well, risk five. It's going to be arguably much slower than the compatible or comparable ARM solutions. Yeah. yeah. It's got a long ways to go, it, kids, before... It does. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, the specs are with the, the the quad core one, how much better it is. Yeah, well, I mean, it it's the new thing. It's something to play with, something to tinker with. And I applaud everybody, yeah. even Canonical is out there, you know, getting ahead of the ball, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want everybody to get off my lawn because X Screensaver <laughs> was released 30 years ago, four days ago. That's right. Uh <laughs> Dude completely forgot about the anniversary until someone pointed it out to him, and, which is why <laughs> cool. this post is two days late. We're talking about 1993. The first version was served from where uh, export uh, MIT.edu. All right. Uh, nice. May have also been uploaded to uh, the archives from 1992. Seem to not exist at all. 
Probably there's an ISO of some Linux distribution for 1992 or 93 that still have the source of these versions. Possibly go search if you can find it. There it is. Now, I had to roll around and think about this. My first thought was when I think about old things um, like X screensaver, which is still available, like what about X snow? Hmm. Yeah, Turns that's a good one. <laughs> next year, X snow turns 30 years old. Yay. Which is kind that's, of fun. It's that's awesome. Uh, yeah, and then get off our lawns. But I mean, if you've been using Linux for any amount of time, you're familiar with X screensaver. Um, it's the thing you remember to disable when it pops up and gives yeah. you a panic attack <laughs> after a fresh install, which has definitely happened in pre-shows because I now have images for the three co-host boxes I have. But for a while, I was just you know popping on Debian default and letting it run which happened to have X screensaver enabled by default. And it would always, always pop up like the weird error message screensaver, mm -hmm. which yeah. would give me a panic. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, what just <laughs> happened? And I would have to snap over and look. I'm like, oh, right. I yes. got to disable that. And you know what? Screensavers are just nostalgia at this point because every monitor made in the last decade plus has a uh, power save mode. It just kicks in automatically. You don't think about it, but it's still nice to travel down that memory lane and yeah. take a look at the classics on something other than a 13-inch CRT that yeah. we all know and love. Absolutely. I think it's pretty neat. And, it, and it's nice to see that X screensaver is still packaged with a lot of the uh, uh, desktop environments. So I'm happy like XFCE. It's really nice. <laughs> and they even have their own XFCE even he has their own little front end for it. That's nice. So, um, yeah, you know, last week we had talked about Debian turned 29 and Gnome turned 25 and now X screensaver turning 30. Uh, that makes me actually, Ven, that makes me feel really old. <laughs> that's because we are really old, Joe. <laughs> that's because we are old. And I have spent so many hours of fun going through all the screensavers available in X screensavers, X screensaver over the years. And I remember actually being excited back in the day when you got X screen, when you got screensavers for Linux that weren't available for Windows and, and wowing my friends. So yeah, that's we, we, something I could say, oh, Linux has these cool screensavers that Windows doesn't. I mean, <laughs> that it's very difficult to explain to somebody getting into computing today. Like you legitimately had to have a screensaver if you're going to leave your box on for any amount of time. And yeah. that was, a, it was a style personalization. Like, I want to get this. Then of course, mm -hmm. you know, the matrix screensaver came out and we just all used that. But um, yeah, that, that was always interesting. Like it's fun thinking about how much time was spent. Yeah. Like finding <laughs> the ones that you liked and the ones that you wanted to use to, it's just not a relevant tech anymore. Yeah, definitely. Well, some of my defaults were like the fiber lamp. I love that. That spun and uh, had all the cool colors on the top of the optics on the mm -hmm. optic wires and the, the Julia sets, uh, part of the uh, fractals um, set of screensavers and the Star Wars one and X app, which was another uh, fractal based uh, screensaver. And those were my default desktop screensavers for many, many years. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I, I can't put a point in it, but at some point you're just like, oh yeah, the monitor power's off. I don't Yeah, I know a now I just, anymore. yeah, hmm. that's what I do too. Yeah. <laughs> strange times, strange times. But yeah, that'll be in the show notes if you want to go down that memory lane. And this time <laughs> next year, we'll be telling you about X snow. Yes, absolutely. That's still one of my favorite. I still use that one because <laughs> it r runs on your wallpaper. <laughs> and, well, I mean, the holiday type things, because uh, yeah. I mean, like a lot of people, I have no idea. It is uh, getting near December until VLC shows up with a Santa hat on. I'm like, oh, yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> That's a Tis thing. It's the season, isn't it? That is the thing. But ladies and gentlemen, we know it. We love it. Can't Microsoft get away from it. loves Linux. Look at it. I mean, that's <laughs> nothing but raging here. Canonical. Has, yes. Uh, I told you this is going to be a boon too heavy. Yes, it sure is. So I think I actually saw this coming, Vin. Canonical is incorporating Microsoft's ASP.NET 
and .NET SDK into Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. And um, a lot of you out there probably know that open source.NET has actually been available in Ubuntu and other Linux distributions for a long time. But this collaboration by Microsoft and Canonical will better secure the .NET software supply chain with enterprise grade support. So .NET 6 developers can install the .NET 6 packages on Ubuntu with a single simple command, sudo apt install .NET 6. That's all there is to it. And Canonical and Microsoft actually built this de uh, .deb package together. And it's, it's big news because Canonical is actually gonna work in concert with Microsoft's new distro maintainer.net group and one of Canonical's goals is to secure the software supply chain from source to packages, eliminating the middleman. So th th this is actually really great, great news. Uh, and kind of one of the last things that needed to be in incorporated in Linux <laughs> for the development community for Microsoft. Well, I can definitely see everyone you yeah. know, over in uh, Red Hat, Fedora, Susie Land going about time. Welcome. About time, yeah. <laughs> and I, I need to bring that up because I saw a lot of like, ah, this confirms it. Microsoft is buying Canonical. I'm like, uh -huh, yeah. Every, everybody else includes .NET. I mean, this isn't the, mm -hmm. the real story. Is you see, Microsoft is shifty, man. Don't you can't ever really pin them down what they're really up to. Microsoft is trying to force people to uninstall Discord on their Debian boxes. <laughs> yeah, Ben, you had an adventure with this. <laughs> Turns out, if you install .NET, uh, it has a very serious conflict with Discord, and Discord gets nuked. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's, it's a bug. It's an open bug. I went and looked around, and I'm like, yep, that's real. It's a blocker, and uh, it's confirmed. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you decide to play around with the .NET on your Ubuntu box, you're like, where'd Discord go? That's where it went. Microsoft loves Linux. Now, .NET, Microsoft is 100% Microsoft when it comes to .NET. You know, you got the open source mm -hmm. language with the proprietary development tools, like the debugging. Like, yeah, that sounds like Microsoft, doesn't it? But you know what? Was this going to open the door for .NET applications to finally be included in Ubuntu? Probably. That's not a bad thing. And of course, of course, telemetry is still mm -hmm. opt out because Microsoft. Yeah, true. I just couldn't get over the um, <laughs> like how how do you want to <laughs> uninstall Discord? On? I, that is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you installed it because I I had I I, I was didn't a little... install it, Jill. I just found the bug report. Oh, oh, okay. So you didn't install it. Okay. No. Because <laughs> I was thinking about installing it and I'm like, well, it's still kind of in beta. It's not really fl fleshed out yet. So, <laughs> but you know, that doesn't stop me before. I've, I would, I constantly install alpha and betas for reviewing here on the show. These but, are two um, things I do not do on a production box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I have a, a my, show note machine one of my machines i do show notes on that has a bunch of testing stuff on it and i'm not gonna lie though i was a bit creeped out by this it's like oh here comes dot net on ubuntu <laughs> so. well, there's nothing to be creeped out about it's probably the most peaceful serene image i've ever seen i mean yeah. in bodies <laughs> oh, boy. like everything you know microsoft is about these days i mean <laughs> That's a great picture of, of Nadella with a, a background of Microsoft and was, uh, a fist holding up. Entertaining. There was one day in the Discord. Scott's like, where did you get that? I'm like, Gimp? <laughs> yeah. I made it. Yes, he um, did. <laughs> speaking of Discord, that's something you can pop in and hang out with us if you become a patron. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a bunch of rewards. We got a bunch of different levels from Cherlings, Death Notes, Sea Monsters, all the way up to becoming a corporate overlord. Yes, that is an option, but that does get you access to our Discord private RSS feed. We do bonus shows each and every week called the Pre-Pre-Super Shows. And if you're wondering by behind the scenes what we got going on, all that fun stuff. If you like these shows and you just want more of it, 
the live and uncut version is in produced podcast format, also available yeah. in video for you for helping us out because we really appreciate it. Also, if you subscribe on Twitch, what's another thing? You can come play Trackmania with us and you can pop in the Discord as well because we're there having our conversations about the Golden Girls currently. Yeah. <laughs> Not kidding. I, I, just, I, I just looked over and like, yep, Golden Girls. That That's the type of really rush stuff that we like to chat about. But <laughs> stick around for your names in the credits. Uh, LinuxGameCast.com. We got Amazon Wishlist, all the fun stuff. We got a store. Plenty of ways to show some love if that's mm -hmm. your jam. Now, this week, we got to get inky. Yeah, this is by? exciting. Oh, this is that, revolutionary. <laughs> this is We've been waiting for this. Pictures <laughs> on cakes are revolutionary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that looks like a very kind of turn of a century cake with <laughs> the photos in frames. Well, now uh, we can make one in color. Yeah. <laughs> we sure can. Color e ink. You know, yeah, it exists. It's a thing. And it doesn't look bad at all. I was kind of surprised. I went back and watched the video. I was more surprised that you can get a 7-inch color e ink screen for $83 in 2022. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. And... Tim kind of walks us through everything we need to set up a nice pie powered photo frame and using that inky board. And it's just really slick because there's no wires mm -hmm. or anything. It just plugs right into the GPI opens like click. You're done. Now go put it in something very easy to set saturation, all the software. You can even use it to display web pages. And what I like, we'll get all the way down to the bottom. Like that's the actual e ink right there. Look at that. That's like, beautiful. It's so that, well done. That's <laughs> dope. Uh, I mean, it, looks really really good for 83 dollars. Mm -hmm. and look at the board there it is there's the inky board it, you just click it in you're done that's it but what i like that tim didn't if we come down to the bottom get ready if you're watching the video it's gonna scroll by so fast mm -hmm. i'm gonna scroll past it look at that he fit everything in uh, using a raspberry pi zero with a little lipo and everything will fit in a four by six picture frame wonderful that's pretty oh, cool. This is so cool, Van. Uh, we've been, you know, honestly, we've been waiting for this for years. When the Amazon Kindle came out with e-ink, e um, when it, their devices came out with that technology, we were so wowed by the low power usage, and you could have it on for months and months, and it never runs out of power. It's just amazing. And uh, I don't even care that the color, this color version has a slower refresh rate than the black and white displays. Just, just to have a full color on e-ink is I don't a pretty either. big I deal. see it as a bonus. You know what? I like a challenge when I play Doom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, look at this application. It's perfect for a, a picture frame or, or just having something static like you would on a, you know, display for a business. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I was really uh, surprised about the price, too, as well. I figured, oh, this is going to be several hundred dollars minimally. <laughs> no, like Vince said, $83.99 at, at Micro Center. Um, Micro Center. Yeah. <laughs> and mine actually had one in stock, and it still had one in stock. I checked this morning, and I'm just amazed it's under $100 for I, a color e-ink display. <laughs> Color e ink and it's a nice slick self contained package. It's not yeah. you know, I was expecting, oh, eighty three bucks, maybe you get a panel, then all right, let's go then you solder this together. Solder and, things. Yeah. yeah. No, just <laughs> kinda click it in and now I really do want to play Doom on it because you, that sounds like a ha ha funny joke. Fifteen seconds refresh. <laughs> which is only slightly worse than trying to play Doom. On the first color laptops. Oh yeah, yeah, those old the old, old TN panels. Oh my gosh, the, the, it wasn't playable. It was it's yeah. all, we did it to have like, hey, come here, you want to laugh? Watch this, and you just turn around and do them, and then <laughs> yeah. just, you just smear them. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, I don't know what I'd use it for, but it's there. I'm sure somebody's got a, you know, I like the idea because if you can pull up web pages, that'd make it really easy to automate and put stuff up on it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and like digital alerts. signage. Yeah. yeah that, okay. That's one of the downsides with the ink though. No backlight. Mm-hmm. That um, is, yeah, 
that, that's mm-hmm. true. It's one of the that's reasons true. I don't use my Kindle. I like confusing my brain at night. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they do have Kindles with lights in them, but <laughs> that's a separate. It's not. Well, part of the yeah, <laughs> like that was like um, <laughs> you can get lights like clip like remember the old Game Boy clip on light things and yeah, so, you know. I was never a fan of, I'm a huge fan of backlight and um, like reading, but if you've ever seen a screenshot of any tablet I have, it's like all the way down plus extra dim. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mess my eyes up, but that's usually how I roll. But ink is, this is just cool. This is color. If you do anything with it, send us some pictures in, or if you'd like to get hold of us, uh, we have a contact form at lexemcast.com. Love to hear from you. Drop a YouTube comment or... If you're brave, really brave, you leave us a voicemail on Spotify or Anchor, which apparently requires you to do like a somersault, a backflip or something like that. It's not terribly straightforward, but we can play it on the show. We've done that on Saturday. We had one person take us up on that, so we know it does work. (laughs) Jill, we get anything else before we bounce out of here? Oh, boy. boy. (laughs) That was a lot of news. (laughs) So, no, I don't think so. I think we're good. (laughs) Let's roll some graphics. (laughs) Wow, we have... Right now, we got Gametron and Steve Husband and Artharon and Strider and Mir and uh, Alex Sipes in chat. We got Scott Scoots (laughs) and Beastwick. And Beastwick is also listening to us live on audio in discord (laughs) and we have all our wonderful uh, patrons Treggy, Veritanuda Nova and Foxdog Gametron and lots of lots of patrons that I can't even (laughs) read the text right now (laughs) but you know who you are (laughs) We'll see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Love you all. <laughs>